Uh, so today uh, on uh, numerical methods, I like to continue a little bit on the acceptance rejection method. Um, so just to recap, we talk about the Monte Carlo method. Uh, inside this uh, chapter, we talk about generating random number sequences of other distributions with given distribution functions. And we already discussed the acceptance rejection uh, method or rejection sampling. Uh, and just to recapitulate, this was the lemma. Yeah, so it looks a little bit uh, complicated. So our aim is to uh, generate an F distributed um, random variable. Yeah, so uh, a sampling of the random variable X with distribution function F. So this random variable capital X is sampled by a sequence little xi. And <clears throat> now this um, lemma, this method uh, tells us that we can um, perform the sampling by actually creating a different sequence uh, of a random variable y, where y is um, g distributed. So y is um, having distribution function g. Okay. And then we just take these y's, yeah, so the y's we generate from this random variable, which is maybe uh, having a simpler, more easy distribution. Yeah. Uh, we take this as the axis, but only uh, after applying some kind of filtering. So we reject a few points and the criteria to filter is given by taking another random drawing U um, of a uniform distributed random variable. Okay, uh, so some UJ, okay. And on this UJ, we have some kind of criteria. So it's the acceptance criteria. So which is here, this uh, blue stuff. Okay, and this acceptance criteria gives us the index that we take from this sequence. Yeah? So whenever this u uh, is smaller than this uh, function on the right hand side, which depends on the value, uh, which is the candidate, uh, then we take this uh, from the sequence. That was um, the uh, method. And if you like to uh, visualize this a little bit, um, there was uh, uj and yj, the sequences, the two sequences which we uh, sample. Okay. And then in addition, we had this uh, function. So we had some condition, condition here. And uh, this condition then uh, tells us, uh, do we take or do we reject the point? Yeah, so maybe this one is rejected, this one is taken, taken, rejected, rejected, and the next one's taken. Yeah, so, so maybe like this. And then um, this gives us the sequence xi by applying this like a filter. Yeah, so this point here is equal to that point. We take that point. This one is taken, and that one will be taken here. So you have some kind of filtering. And the filtering was done according to this ratio of the densities. And this then um, uh, generates uh, the F distributed sequence. And the ratio of the densities was the density of uh, the F uh, distributed random variable and the density of the G distributed random variable. So for this, you have to know the densities, but not more. And Actually, I like to look at uh, some uh, example uh, on uh, where we can use this. Uh, it's a classical example you find in the literature, but uh, maybe to make this comment now, uh, I believe no one is using this method for this example. The example will be the normal distribution, um, but it's a nice motivation for another important numerical method, which I will then uh, mention at the end of this session, which is weighted Monte Carlo. Um, okay, before uh, we do this, I would like to make one other, say, maybe a bit negative remark on this me method. Um, 
there is a, some kind of disadvantage in, hidden in this method. And um, the reason or the, the disadvantage is that this rejection criteria is a little bit binary, yeah? So depending on the value of this ratio, you either reject or take the point. So if now, for example, your um, distribution function, say here, uh, or your density, say here F, yeah, depends on some parameter, then your criteria depends on this parameter. Yeah? Say some additional model parameter, whatever you have. And then it may happen that if you make a slightly small modification to this parameter, say the new theta is theta zero plus epsilon, then suddenly a point is removed from the sequence. And depending on how the sequence is then used, for example, if you use a one-dimensional sequence uh, to sample a two-dimensional sequence, yeah, uh, so that was the sequence before you did the change to the parameter, and then this is maybe the sequence after you made the change to the parameter. Yeah. So um, that point here is removed. Okay. If you now from this one dimensional sequence generate uh, a two dimensional one, yeah, by populating vectors, yeah, so like this one, two, and the next one, one, two. Okay, then you suddenly see that one, two, the sequence generates completely different points. Yeah, this one was going here, that one was going here, the one that is removed was going here. The other one, uh, the next one, maybe I take uh, queen, yeah, goes here, okay. And this sequence here now takes the queen point at this position. Okay, so uh, what was that dark queen? Yeah, so it's completely mixing up your sequences. Um, which is then some kind of discontinuity. You have a small change to a parameter, which gives you a totally different sequence. This can happen yeah, with this method. So you have to be a little bit careful that you do not have parameters inside these uh, functions. That, that's just a small remark, yeah, but these problems uh, uh, at some areas uh, in, uh, in practical application uh, occur and uh, they can ruin your calculation. Okay, so that was just a remark. Um, what I like to discuss now with you is an application, and this application is then also a motivation for uh, weighted Monte Carlo. And um, you find here different um, examples, uh, also in the script. For example, for an inhomogeneous exponential distribution, I like to skip these examples and discuss this one. Uh, a little bit more in, in more detail. Uh, how can we generate a normal distributed random variable from uh, uh, using using this uh, acceptance rejection method? Okay, so um, what you see here actually you you is a classical example which you find in the literature, but I have two different version of this uh, versions of this, and the second one is uh, maybe much uh, better. Yeah? And maybe we see also see it uh, later in some code. So I like to generate a sequence of normal distributed random variables. So assume we do not know any better method, method, for example, a version of the distribution function. We know the density of the normal distribution. Yeah, So the density of the normal distribution looks maybe a little bit like this, yeah? some bell-shaped thing here. So the density is 
one divided by square root of two P exponential minus X square half. Okay. And do we know some other distribution that can dominate yeah, using a scaling factor this, um, this density? Yeah? Recall, if you go back to the lemma, there was a criteria which we have to fulfill uh, the y distributed, uh, the, the, the random verb, uh, the sequence y with g distribution has to have the property that the density multiplied with some constant is always above the target density, yeah? so the density f. So here in this example, do we have some uh, distribution or some density that's always above? Well, uh, one thing which we know is the exponential distribution. So here's the exponential distribution g of x is exponential minus x, so with parameter lambda equal to uh, one. And um, so the density looks like this. So it's zero on the left, and then here we have uh, one with slope one, we exit here, and there is ex exponential decay. Okay, so we maybe could use this, but it's only, uh, its support is only on the positive side, yeah? So um, it's uh, zero for x uh, equals zero. So um, the trick which you find in the literature is for to sample the normal distributed random variable x, so we are interested in a normal distributed random variable x. We perform a first uh, step, namely we sample um, the absolute value of x. And the absolute value of x is just um, the density uh, copied to the other side, yeah? so added to the other side. So this is then, uh, let's draw this here. Uh, Okay, so this is then here a little bit higher yeah, because everything is doubled. Yeah. And the bell looks like this. Yeah. So actually um, we get uh, a two here because we have absolute value of X. Yeah. So this is the density phi of absolute value of X. Okay, so we get a, just a two in the density uh, because its support is on the positive numbers. Okay, and then we first sample this and after we have used um, acceptance rejection sampling to sample this, we take another random drawing just from uh, the set one and minus one which just then tells us, um, is it on the positive side or on the negative side? And we just multiply with this, yeah? So we just make a random drawing um, after we have created this uh, number. So the intermediate step here is to sample absolute value of X. This is done with acceptance rejection. And the second step is then sample the sign. So S in minus one, one. And then we just take X as S times our sampled absolute value. Okay, so for this X, absolute value, we have here the uh, distribution function. Yeah, so this is here our, uh, um, our yeah, f of x, okay. f of x, and where is now the exponential distribution? 
So exponential distribution is one in zero. Uh, this one is uh, two divided by square root of two p, yeah, so which is a little bit less, yeah, so it starts here, yeah, then the slope goes a little bit below, sorry, goes a little bit below and then it decays slower, okay? So the other one decays faster. And actually the constant C, um, that uh, puts um, the green line on top. Yeah, so so the constant I have to multiply uh, to the green line to move it a little bit higher. So how do we find it? Uh, so let's write this. Um, here, yeah, so let's take a look at f of x divided by g of x, so the ratio, so this is uh, the density 2 divided by square root of 2p, yeah? uh, exponential minus uh, 1 half, sorry, 1 half, x squared. So now divided by exponential minus x, divided by exponential minus x is like multiplying with exponential plus x. So this is here a plus and then uh, I have a minus 2 if I make a bracket here, minus 2x. Okay. So that's the ratio of the two densities and I can at maybe um, another plus one here. Okay, so add a plus one here. Then if you add a plus one there, it is like multiplying with exponential minus one half. Uh, so this is square root, one divided by square root of e. So I just give me another uh, square root of e in front. So this is two square root of e here in front to give me this, um, this one. And then you see that you have two, uh, actually I can take the square root here and two divided by square root of two is square root of two, square root of two e divided by square root of p, nice constant, exponential minus one half, and then I have an x minus one squared. Okay, and you see that um, actually this part here uh, can now become our constant c, oops, This part here can now become our constant C. And then we have that this remaining thing here is less or equal one. Okay, so we have found the constant C such that um, F of X is smaller than C times G of X. Yeah? So F of X divided by C times G of X is smaller than one. Uh, this is uh, acceptance rejection to sample the normal distribution. So maybe I just uh, check that this uh, is true. Yeah? So let's uh, try this in the computer. Uh, so I hope this is uh, quick. Yeah, that's maybe nice to see. So let's call this uh, normal distribution acceptance rejection experiment. Um, and just um, implement this. And we need to generate a sequence of exponential distributed um, random variables. So um, I use a Mersenne twister for this. Yeah, so for the uniform distributed ones, which we need, I use a Mersenne twister. And I explain you later, I call this uh, tests 
acceptance rejection with mesentrister 3D, yeah, because I have another uh, version. And how many sample points do we like to do? Um, so let's declare this here as a uh, constant, so number of samples, uh, 10 million, yeah? One, two, three, one, two, three, okay. So let's have 10 million. And uh, let's uh, start. So we need uniform random numbers. So let's take uh, Mersentwister, or let's call it here uniform, to generate uniform random numbers. Uh, could also use something different. And I would like to plot uh, the distribution or the, the histogram uh, of our values. Yeah? So let's uh, put all the values we generate in some uh, array. Yeah? So I allocate some array here to put um, to put our generated values so I can later uh, maybe create a plot from this. Okay, so that's just um, a technical detail. So now I like to generate uh, 10 million numbers. Yeah? So I from zero, to 10 million, not included, um, do the following. Okay, so um, X is our um, sample for the um, random variable absolute value of X. So first we do the first step, yeah, which is here, uh, acceptance rejection uh, sampling X absolute value. Um, so maybe I, I create this uh, variable here and also I need some um, Boolean um, if this value is uh, rejected or not. So is rejected is uh, true. Okay. And then I have a small loop. So while the value is rejected, repeat the following. Okay, you can also do a do while, yeah? So which is maybe from the intuition also nice, but this is maybe just a taste. So now here inside, we sample the point and we test if the, if, if the point is rejected. So the sampling of the point is, if you go back, a point with exponential distribution. So how was that? So um, maybe I write this uh, here. Yeah, I need a little bit more space here. So let's move this a little bit below. So you just maybe recall uh, if uh, V is uniform, yeah, then uh, the distribution function G of X of the exponential distribution is one minus exponential minus x. So this means that y, if we use now the technique inverse of the uh, distribution function, y is minus logarithm of one minus v. Yeah? So this is exponential. Okay, so, and below the f of x is here the normal one. So that was the f of x. Let's get rid of this black line. Oops. So that was the normal one. Maybe not so beautiful. And this is the G of X. So um, yeah, we like to here create an exponential distributed candidate, exponential distributed candidate. So that is, uh, we generate uh, the V, which is uh, uniform distributed. So uniform get, um, get next uh, double, yeah, or get, get S double from our uh, Mersenne twister, yeah? So we have a, a uniform distributed random variable. And from that, we generate our candidate. So X is 
uh, what was it, minus the logarithm of one minus V. Okay, so now comes the acceptance rejection. Yeah? So we need to generate two uh, uniforms. We need another one. And you know that since this is a pseudo random number generator, I can just ask for two values. And uh, then I have now a vector. Yeah? And what is the criteria to be uh, rejected or not? So is rejected. So the criteria is here on our slide. So it is uh, accepted. So if we go back to the to the lemma, yeah, it is uh, accepted if we are u is below f of y cg of y. So it is rejected if we are above. And in our example, the ratio f divided by cg, okay, with the constant c chosen as this is just this expression here. So we have to plug in our candidate, yeah, the x uh, or the y in this function, exponential minus one half x, uh, exponential minus one half um, x minus one uh, squared. Yeah? So just take uh, this squared like this. Yeah? So, and we check if this is now smaller or larger u. So it is rejected if u is larger than that. Okay. So, um, if we have passed this loop, the claim is now that the x is uh, absolute value of a normal distribution. So we need to perform one additional sample, uh, namely the sign. Yeah? So what is the sign? So, okay, we just take another sample from our random number generator. This one is sampling uniform between zero and one. So we just check, is it, smaller than 0.5, yeah? If yes, then take one, otherwise take minus one. So we have just an independent sampling of a sign. And now the normal one is just S times X. And we add this to our values. Okay, so. Now the claim is that this uh, array, I hope I did everything uh, correct, is uh, normal distributed. I can plot this. So there is a histogram here, create histogram from a list of values. Uh, this is the number of uh, discretization for the histogram and the number of standard deviations, so the size uh, to plot. And let's uh, check if this program runs. So. Live coding is always a little bit of an adventure. Uh, let's run this. Hello, hello, hello. Ah, okay, the plot has to be shown. So show the plot. Let's try again. Yes, looks nice. Okay, so we have created a normal distributed. Uh, so maybe you could now do some tests on this if it is really uh, a good approximation of the normal distribution, but looks, uh, uh, looks like it should look. Okay, so actually this method has a disadvantage. Yeah, so actually you see that if you do not reject the point, we need to call three times the random number generator to generate one sample point. And that's the reason why I called this 3D here. And uh, <clears throat> how would this look if you, you would use, for example, um, a Horton sequence, a quasi random number generator? So since this is also very quick, I just copy the code and I write here, test air with Horton. Uh, so, and here are we, we have another test, test uh, air with Horton. 
Okay. And so Halton sequence, not Halton twister. Okay. Uh, so I like to replace now the Mersenne twister with a Halton sequence. So let's get rid of this. So here we can just ask for a Halton number. Huh? So you can write Halton sequence, get Halton number for a given index and a given base. So what's now the index? So actually, since we have to reject points, the index cannot be the I, yeah? because uh, we actually have to uh, uh, reject the point. So the index is a J uh, with base two. And since we have to sample two independent uh, random variables, this here has to be a different base. So Horton sequence in two dimensions. And the J is just some other index, which is running here. So actually the J is counting now all the points, even the rejected ones. Yeah? So this loop is just counting the ones which we take. And here inside I'm counting uh, also the rejected ones. So, but now you see there's a small issue here. The sampling of the sign has to be an independent uh, uniform. So actually I have to be in three dimension. I have to take the Halton sequence uh, also for the corresponding uh, J here, yeah? yes? The sign should be for the corresponding J. Um, so you can do it a little bit clever, yeah? To actually ask here exactly the right J. But just for illustration, let's sample here the a third number, a W, which is for another base, five, and calculate the sign here inside the loop. Okay, so this is the X, this is the S. Okay, the S is now sampled from the W. Okay, and then we immediately uh, write the normal. Yeah, the normal is uh, S times X here. So, and this variable is now the one which we create. Okay, so I have modified the algorithm slightly, but you see it's actually taking three uniform distributed random numbers, but now it's a three-dimensional quasi-random number sequence. So, and from the first, uh, from the second one, I sample the absolute value of the normal. From the third one, I sample the sign. And from the first one, I sample if I reject the point or not. Okay, so, and then normal is already calculated. Okay, so let's keep fingers crossed if this works. So this one was the one with the Mersenne, and this one was the one with Halton. Huh? So maybe I add a small title here. So this is with Halton 3D. And this is the plot with Mersen. Mersen Twister in 3D. And then you also have a title in your picture. <clears throat> so you see, you can sample a normal distributed random variable using a three-dimensional three-dimensional uniform sequence. And you also see that the Horton sequence is a little bit uh, smoother here, yeah? So there's a small kink here, yeah? So it looks, looks a little bit uh, nicer, yeah? Okay. So interesting that you can also do this with a Horton sequence because the sequence is not random at all. So we will see in a few minutes uh, why this also works, of course, with the quasi-random number sequence, because we are just doing integration. Yeah? But maybe interesting to see this. Um, I told you that this example here, which you also find in, in, in literature, is maybe not the best one. 
So let's try this again. So uh, we like to sample a normal distributed uh, random variable. So X should be normal distributed. So the density of X is exactly that one of the normal distribution. So we take here the true density of the normal distribution. Okay, so like this. And now just look at some uh, distribution which has the same support. Yeah, so here the support is from uh, of, of the whole re, uh, real number, so from minus infinity to x. So I would like to have the same support for my g. And for the function g, we just take, um, instead of flipping the normal one to the positive side, we copy the exponential to the negative side. So we take one half an exponential distributed uh, random variable on both sides. So there is here, Note there is the absolute value inside, yeah, on both sides. So we have the um, distribution function. Maybe I plot it here in the plot. Yeah, starts a little bit higher and then it goes here below and it decays slower. Yeah, so it stays above. If we go to infinity, it stays above this line. And the same on the left hand side. Uh, on the right hand side. So this is our function G and this is our function F. Okay, the ratio of the two guys, so F of G divided by C of G is actually the same, yeah, because uh, look, here there is now a one instead of a two. There was a two here, yeah? uh, but here we have a half instead of a one. Yeah, So it's just a factor of uh, one half, which was applied to both uh, distributions yeah? to get equal mass on both sides. So the acceptance criteria is uh, nicely the same. Yeah? So we do not have to code this again. Uh, is the exponential of minus one half but now since we are on the left and right value uh, aside, uh, it's also with absolute value minus one squared, uh, uh, smaller than one. Okay, so what's the distribution function uh, G? Yeah? So the distribution function G, so we like to generate uh, the G distributed sequence. This is the integral from minus infinity to X. Um, or let's, let's, let's take a Y, yeah? Because actually it's also more in line with my other notation. I'm sampling Y, which is the candidate for X. So here we have a Y. So then we have, we integrate G of X DX. Okay. so. I just distinguish, am I on the positive side or on the negative side? So if I'm on the positive side, it is one half plus one half the exponential distribution. So one half, one minus exponential minus X. If I'm on the negative side, it is just one half. In the middle, it is one half. Yeah? So it's one half minus this. So it is one half minus one half one minus exponential, but now the minus x is actually a plus x. If I'm on the positive side is that one, on the negative side is that one. Actually, you see that you can easily write this um, more concise. Yeah, This is just one half multiplied with one plus the sine of x. Yeah, So plus, if I'm on the plus side, minus and then times one minus exponential absol uh, minus absolute value of X. Okay, so that's the distribution function. G, we like to sample uh, 
a G distributed random variable from a uniform drawing. So if V is G of Y, so what is the inverse? So invert this function. Uh, so you see there is uh, a one half here. So I have a two V. So let's write a two V here. A two V. Then there is um, a one here. So subtract the one, so it's minus one. Okay, then I have to um, divide by the sine of x. But there's a funny uh, thing here. If um, x is positive, then two v minus one. So actually v is one half, uh, greater than one half if x is positive, you know, because the distribution function is exactly cutting it in two equal pieces, yeah? So if x is larger than zero, v is larger than one half, which means that two v is larger than one, which means that two v minus one is larger than zero. So actually it is that the sine of x is equal to the sine of two v minus one. So if I multiply with the sine of x, it's like multiplying with the sine of two v minus one. So I just take the absolute value here. So then the next step is that we have here this uh, bracket. Yeah. So there is a one here. So I have to subtract this one. So there is another uh, minus one here. Then there is in front of the exponential a minus. Yeah? So I'm inverting here. So I multiply it with minus one. So this is a minus absolute value plus one. Then there is the exponential. The inverse of the exponential is the logarithm. So we have the logarithm of, actually I can here do one minus absolute value, two V minus one. Then inside the exponential, there is a minus here in front. So we have a minus here in front. And then I have to um, multiply with the sine of x yeah, to get this absolute value here. So this absolute value is just the sine of x multiplied with x. So I have to divide with the sine of x, which is the same as multiplying with the sine of x. And the sine of x is just the sine of 2v minus 1. So that's our inverse of the distribution function of this function g. So let's try this. And this is automatically sampling uh, the sign. So let's try this one in the code. Let's call this uh, test acceptance rejection with Mersenne 2D. Yeah? So maybe I just uh, uh, copy this code here. So 2D, so I copied the code. So this is our Mersenne twister. This is our array where we store the values. Um, okay, so then this X here, we can avoid the X. I can immediately use, uh, draw the normal one. So we take a two dimensional um, uniform. Okay, and um, so what is the acceptance rejection? So criteria. So actually the acceptance rejection criteria was the same. Yeah? Was the same. So let's first write this part here with the logarithm. Okay, so this is minus the logarithm, one minus, and the difference is that the here inside we have absolute value of two V minus one. That was the only difference. Okay, then the acceptance rejection criteria is actually the same. Okay, and our normal is the sine of 2v minus 1 multiplied with this number here. So it is sine or signum 
Uh, so signum is one if the argument is greater than zero. Yeah, so this is the right function. So two v minus one multiplied with y. Okay, and you can rid, get rid of this additional uh, additional sampling. Yeah, so actually we are now in two dimensions. So much shorter code here. Yeah, two dimensional uniform inverse of the distribution function for v. Uh, this, or, okay, or, or actually this here is the inverse yeah, and this is the criteria which we check. So actually you could also just place the normal there inside, but maybe this looks nicer. So let's change here the title of the plot. And let's check if this works. So that one is the three-dimensional Mersenne, the three-dimensional Horton, and the two-dimensional Mersenne. Uh, and maybe it's a bit smoother, I don't know. Uh, the reason is you take uh, uh, much fewer um, random numbers yeah, because you do not have to do the additional sampling of the sign. Okay, and if you like, you can also do this here with the Halton, yeah, but with the Halton, you see that it's also much nicer. You just have a two dimensional integration, yeah, so you can get rid of this additional part here. So that was a small um, discussion of this example, but as I mentioned, I would like to use this example to motivate uh, something else. So, um, Experiment, implement the um, acceptance rejection to sample a normal distribution. This is what we have just uh, done. And maybe to illustrate you what was going on here, uh, we can have a look at, uh, actually, where is this now? At this. Okay, so actually here on the right hand side, yeah, you see what we just did. So this blue line here is the inversion of the distribution function. So um, we sample this exponential distribution, exponential distribution on the positive side with one half in front and exponential distribution on the negative side. And the distribution function was the sine of 2v minus 1, logarithm of 1 minus absolute value 2v minus 1. So here on the, on the axis, x-axis, you see the v, and you just, if you move this point, you sample uh, 2 half exponential distributions. Yeah? So from here to there, it's an exponential distribution, and from here to there. Actually, you also see what we already did, what we did. Uh, we sample the sign by taking are we between one half and one, this is sampling the sign, or are we between zero and one half? And on each half interval, we, th we then sample a classical exponential distribution. Okay, and add a negative sign. So what is now acceptance rejection doing? So ex acceptance rejection, assume you have a point like this one, is drawing another uniform distributed random variable. So let's draw this uniform distributed random variable here between zero and one. And then on this cube of all possible uniform distributed random variables. So on this cube, we have some criteria if we accept the point or not. Yeah? And this criteria is actually this function here, exponential minus one half, absolute value of x minus one squared, yeah? where the x is actually this blue point. Okay, this looks like this. So this is actually this function. Yeah? So this kink here comes from the absolute value in this function. So, and this is this function exponential minus one half x minus one squared. This function plugged in, okay, of, of y. Uh, okay, and you see that if you move this point here, yeah, uh, and if you move this point here, the point A 
which decides on whether we accept or reject changes. And here along this line, we reject if we are larger than this value. Yeah? So here in this animation, you see that this point disappears if we are above. So actually you see that this point here is always the same. It's just that, do we take the point or not? Okay, and now from this picture, uh, maybe you already have an intuition that we can be a little bit more efficient. Or also you, uh, uh, in addition, you maybe now see what's going on. The probability that we accept this point is the ratio of the green line and the red line along this vertical axis here. No? So where is the vertical axis in the red part compared to where's the vertical axis in the green part? So this is the ratio of the point uh, of the X, this is the acceptance rate. Okay, so actually we do not filter all out all values of Y, we just filter out that many percent values of Y. So instead of just removing the values, we could maybe just multiply uh, the Monte Carlo um, evaluation with a weight. Let's elaborate on this um, a little bit. So this was the graph which you just saw, okay? And when you sample, for example, this point here, then this means that you create this value here for y. But for all those points on this line here, this value y will be the same because it is the intersection of the red line and the blue line. And how many points of this value y are accepted and how many points are rejected? So the length of this line here, this part, tells you if the point is accepted and the length of this line here tells you if the point, uh, sorry, this one, the red one is uh, rejected and the green one is, the length of the green one is, uh, tells you if the point is accepted. Yeah? So these here are the ones which are accepted and these are the ones which are rejected. Okay, so instead of throwing the point away, with a certain frequency, maybe it's a little bit nicer to just use this weightening. Okay. Um, so what we just did was combining acceptance rejection sampling with an inverse distribution function. So maybe that's always the case, yeah? So we were using um, that we know the inverse of G to generate Y. And if you have this, you can replace um, the Y with G inverse of V. For example, in this criteria, and you see that the algorithm reinterpreted in this case just is sample a sequence uj yj uv uniform on zero one squared and in the area which is defined by this criteria which is in our plot sorry which is in our plot the green area On this area, take the point G inverse of V to be the X. So if you go back, you see it's obvious that a quasi random number generator would also work because all that we do is we perform, if we perform Monte Carlo integration, we 
perform integration on this box, yeah, on this uh, square, where we have some kind of indicator function. Whenever we are on the green area, we take the point, otherwise we remove it from the sequence. So if you if you uh, use this view, yeah, it's actually like using always um, a two-dimensional sequence uh, of two uniforms uh, random variables. Okay, um, let's take a, again a look at this idea of the weightening. So what happens if you use now this sequence in a Monte Carlo integration? So you know that we use the random number sequences to approximate expectations. So assume there is some function h given uh, and we would like to calculate expectation h of x, where x is f distributed and generated by um, acceptance rejections sampling. Yeah? So xi is generated by acceptance rejection. And we like to approximate this expectation, which means I like to actually calculate this Monte Carlo integral. So calculating this Monte Carlo integral with acceptance rejection is a little bit like um, taking the sum, but from the sum, removing some points. So a little bit like multiplying with an indicator function. And this indicator function is our um, acceptance criteria. So we have some indicator here, some acceptance indicator. So this is just the indicator function that u is smaller than f of y divided by c, g of y. So this is our acceptance rejection indicator. And recall a few properties. Um, what is the acceptance uh, rate? Yeah? So in this uh, picture here, the accept, my acceptance rate is how many points are in the green area compared to the red area for maybe a fixed V, yeah? So it's like taking the expectation over all possible values U for a given value Y. Yeah? So R of Y um, is the expectation of how many points are accepted if the point has the value y. We already calculated this in the proof. It is because um, this here is an indicator function, yeah, and u is uniform. This is just f of y divided by cg of y. Okay, so this f of y divided by cg of y is the percentage of points that are accepted given that the value of the point is y. So actually this corresponds a little bit, so now take a different view, like considering a weighted sum. So let's go back here and motivate this a little bit. If you have maybe a Monte Carlo integration of h of x and assume the sequence you generate with, um, for, uh, 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 with acceptance uh, rejection is maybe like this. And the color is now the value of h of x. So assume that these values are just all the same. Yeah? And then it's maybe that from the blue one, you remove two points, maybe these two next points. From the red one, you remove two out of three. Yeah? And maybe from the green one, you remove one out of two, uh, 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 two out of three, uh, one out of three, sorry. Okay, so then 
you take here the sum the sum of h of x yeah so two times blue one times red yeah so this is h of a blue dot plus um, h of another blue dot okay so maybe i have to fix the colors um, a bit plus h of a red dot and so on okay instead you could just use the original sequence multiplied with some weight okay and what's the weight yeah the weight function is just how many dots are rejected and how many are accepted so the weight function for the blue dots is one half because one half of the dots are uh, accepted the weight function for the red dots is just one third and the weight function for the queen dots is just two third so w of the queen dot is two third okay so instead of throwing the points away we could just keep the points and multiply with um, uh, with the weight uh, i hope this idea is clear yeah so actually this looks like this um, if we perform a monte carlo integral using yi with acceptance rejection this actually corresponds to considering a weighted sum where the weight of the sum is our acceptance rate so now in the sum uh, you do not have as many points as before because if you use acceptance rejections some points from the sums are removed so actually the number of points in front one divided by n is a different number so what's the number uh, we have to divide it's the um, sum over the weights yeah so actually what you see here is just a weighted average okay if we now consider this weighted average using our r y from the acceptance rejection sampling then plugging in the definition the weight is f of y divided divided by cg of y this is our acceptance rate so also here then actually you see that the constant c is cancelling so actually what is the constant c the constant c is just needed to make f of y divided by cg of y smaller than one so actually the constant c is only needed to make this function here be below one so make it inside this box but for the weight the weight can be also bigger yeah? so if the ratio f divided by g is bigger than one it just means take this point more often while you don't take another point uh, that often okay so you see that this weighted sum corresponds now to a weighted sum with some weight w where w is because here the uh, constant c uh, cancels where w is just f divided by g So w is just f divided by g and by the way uh, what is the monte carlo sum of all these weights yeah, the monte carlo average so if you take the monte carlo average of all these weights this converges to the expectation of um, let's take a different color this converges to the expectation of 
W of Y. So expectation W of Y, uh, Y is G distributed. So I know the density. I know the density of this guy, which is G. Uh, the W of Y is just F divided by G. So you see the G cancels and this is just integrate the density. Uh, this is just uh, one. Oh, actually, the, there's a small typo here. The bounds on the integral are not correct. So let's erase them. This is just, ah, okay. Or RD if you are in D dimensions. So you see that uh, in this expression, I have a weighted sum uh, and here in front, there is the sum of the weights, but one divided by N of the sum of the weight converges to um, one. So actually I can give me another one divided by N here in front, uh, one divided by one divided by N, uh, is like n, so I have multiplied with n, so I have to give me another one divided by n maybe here. Okay, and you see that this part here is actually converting, convergent, has convergence to one. Yeah. So you see that our weighted sum with the acceptance rate as weight corresponds to the Monte Carlo integral of the function h times w, where w is exactly this weight here. So this is of course the Monte Carlo approximation of the integral h times w since y is um, g distributed. I know the density. This is h times w times g dy. Since the weight is f divided by g, this is just the integral h of y, f of y, which is just the expectation of h of x. Okay, so you see acceptance rejection used to uh, sample x plugged into a Monte Carlo integral uh, approximates the expectation of h of x, but we can also reinterpret this as a weighted sum. We do not throw the points away like in rejection. We just use the corresponding weight. And what do we have achieved by this? Actually, our program was for the normal distribution. First, it was a three dimensional integration. We had to draw three random numbers to sample one point. Then acceptance rejection done uh, in the optimal way was a two dimensional integration. But now it's a one dimensional integration. Yeah, it's just uh, sample the sequence and use the corresponding weight. Do not reject a point. And remember, we needed this additional two-dimensional thing here, we needed it to decide, do we reject the point or not? But now I don't reject the point at all. I just take this value with the corresponding weight. So this means I integrate the vertical axis you know, to get the weight and I do not reject the point. So interpretation, um, a Monte Carlo integration with acceptance rejection sampling actually can be reinterpreted as a weighted Monte Carlo. Yeah. So this means on the left-hand side, you start with acceptance rejection. So take the expectation of H of Y, where you have the condition that the indicator function u with your auxiliary uh, uniform and y is one. So actually this is the acceptance rejection indicator. 
So on the left-hand side, I have a two-dimensional integral expectation of u and y. u and y is two-dimensional. A conditional expectation can be rewritten as um, h times h of y times the indicator divided by expectation of the indicator. Uh, so take only those values of h of y where the indicator is one and divide by the number of values you have taken. Uh, so actually this here below is um, expectation of a uh, u, this is the C. Okay. Uh, actually, it's the one divided by C, right? It's the one divided by C. It's, it's, it's the expected accept, acceptance rate. Yeah, C is larger than one. So this here is one divided by C. Okay, so maybe I draw it like this, one divided by C, and you see that this is the C I'm plugging in here. Okay, and what I have on the top is a two-dimensional integral. So what I have here is a 2D integral over U v yeah so u and v are uniform so i know that this is uniform so i integrate over the two-dimensional domain here the the um, um, cube the unit cube zero one squared and i integrate h of g inverse of v which is my y multiplied with the indicator do i accept the point or don't i accept the point and now you see that the variable um, u, if you accept the point or not, you know, the variable u, which decides here in this graph, this is the u, do I reject or accept? This only occurs in this function ar, so I can integrate it out. Yeah? So I get the expectation is... Uh, or, or the integral of a r uh, over all possible values of u is just r, the acceptance rate. So we get here the acceptance rate from this. And we have an integral only over um, a one-dimensional interval. Yeah? So I can remove the second dimension by now multiplying with the weight instead of an indicator, which is much better. Yeah, it's the it's uh, actually we have reduced the dimension. Okay, and if you know the definition of the R, yeah, so recall the R was f divided by c times g. Yeah, so you see that this c here actually cancels um, this c cancels here with this C, and this is then the weight. So this is one divided by C times the weight W. So we have here our weight W. Which only depends on V. So you see, this is just the expectation of h of y, w of y. So we can calculate the expectation of x by calculating the expectation of, or say, let's say we can calculate the expectation. Uh, so we can calculate the expectation of h of x by calculating the expectation of h of y multiplied with the weight, where the weight is the ratio of the two densities. This is like, just like a change of measure. Yeah? Uh, and this weight is then the Radonicodym derivative. But now you see that actually this motivates from the acceptance uh, rejection sampling. And it's much more efficient because you do not have to draw a random number, a second dimension, just to throw other points away. 
Okay, so I have a, a few slides summarizing this. So this is called Weighted Monte Carlo. And uh, actually we have more useful applications of this. Yeah, very nice uh, thing. So if you have two random variables, X and Y, uh, D-dimensional, integrable random variables. And uh, if you know the densities, phi X and uh, Y, uh, phi Y, then you can represent uh, the expectation of h of x using the density. So you have expectation h of x is integral h phi x dx. And you can represent also the expectation of y. So it's integral h of y phi y dy. Okay, so I have both guys. And now I need a condition. And this, this condition corresponds a little bit to the condition in the acceptance rejection that one density is always below the other. Uh, and actually the condition would be that if phi y is zero, so if something is impossible, for the random variable y, then it's also impossible for the random variable x. So this is a, maybe a bit stricter requirement than the one which is on the slide, but it's maybe more intuitive. So this means that if say the point y, so little y is impossible for the random variable y, then it is also impossible for x. Why? Because, why I need this? Because I want to replace the sampling of x with the sampling of y. But if there are points that are impossible of y, which were possible for x, I would have forgotten some points, some important points. So actually I just need this condition. So, and here this condition is even a little bit more relaxed. So actually I need it only for H times Y. Because I perform expectation of H times X. Yeah? And when there is a region where H is zero, I don't care, okay? So um, if you have this condition, we just define the weight W. The weight W is the ratio of the two densities, uh, given that the density of phi is positive. Otherwise I just take an arbitrary value. So say, let's say take uh, zero. Okay. And then we have that, um, h of x phi of x is the same as uh, phi x of x is the same as h of x w phi y of x. So I can replace the density phi x with the density phi y given that in addition I multiply with the weight. So actually this is obvious yeah? if phi is larger than zero yeah. then the weight is just phi x divided by phi y. So here you see the phi y cancels and this is just h of x times phi x. If phi y is zero, yeah, then here on the right hand side, I have um, um, a zero, yeah. but I have this condition that also the left hand side is zero. So if h is not zero, then phi y must be zero uh, phi and phi y is zero. Then this here is uh, uh, zero. And then the left-hand side is also zero. If h is zero, then the left-hand side is zero anyway. Okay, so we have this green line and you see that then we can replace the expectation of h of x, which is integral h density of x by integral h w density of y. 
so I can replace the density, and which I can then reinterpret it as integrating with respect to the y density, so which I can then re just reinterpret. Yeah, so there's just a reinterpretation here by using the y instead of the x. Okay, it's just a relabeling, and I'm reinterpreting this now as the expectation h times y evaluated on the random number sequence y. Okay, so if you now apply the Monte Carlo approximation to this on the left hand side, on the right hand side, it's just ex expectations. So you can apply the Monte Carlo approximation to this, then you see that you can approximate the expectation of x with the Monte Carlo integral using the sequence y. So here is the important thing, using sequence yi, sampling y, okay? So we use a wrong sequence, but we correct with the weight. Actually, acceptance rejection started because we were not able to generate the sequence X. So we generated some helper sequence Y and we corrected the mistake yeah, by removing some points or here by just multiplying with this uh, weight. But um, as a small remark, you can use this trick also to improve your numerical convergence rate. So this is here now um, a remark on uh, variance reduction. Or important sampling, yeah. So recall our convergence estimate, uh, which we derived for the Monte Carlo method. There was a factor, uh, and actually this factor was the variance of the function which we integrate. And here you integrate two different functions. Either you can integrate h of x, or you can integrate h of y, w of y, uh, using the sequence x or the sequence y. So actually by using a different uh, sequence yeah, with the weight, you can modify uh, the variance and hence you can modify the convergence uh, rate of your Monte Carlo integral. And more important is, recall that regions where H for example is zero are maybe not so important to us. Yeah? So it's maybe not good to sample many points in this region because we just add a zero to the sum. Yeah, and when we already know that there's a zero, maybe it doesn't matter to sample points there. So we can use this trick of using a different sequence to actually sample the important regions of H. And maybe you could have an exercise uh, on this, or we can maybe have one. So if you think of, um, um, so maybe we have one in the lecture, yeah. You can check. If you think of our application of, say, uh, calculating the expectation of the payoff function of a financial derivative. So maybe here is your payoff function of financial derivative. So this is now a call option. There is some K and something is happening here. And now you take the Plague-Scholz model. So the Plague-Scholz model has some log normal distribution. So you have many points maybe here and then maybe it looks like this. Okay. And now you, you sample um, your points according to this orange uh, distribution uh, or other, uh, put different view, you integrate actually the product of the payoff function and the density, you see that there are very few points in this region where the important stuff is happening. Yeah? Okay, so maybe you could, could just shift this orange line 
and take maybe a different probability distribution. You could even take a normal one, whatever. You just need the, prop the property that whenever the lila one is, the purple one is, is uh, impossible, then also the orange one has to be impossible. Yeah. Um, okay, and now we uh, sample uh, the points in the important region more often. When we calculate the expectation, we have to correct for the frequency, which is the ratio of the two uh, curves. Okay, so that was actually it for the Monte Carlo method. I have um, a very last remark now on the Monte Carlo simulation of stochastic processes, uh, which I like to do in, maybe I'd like to do it in the next session. Uh, but it's a very short one. And then maybe more important, we will discuss actually the time discretization of stochastic processes.